Hi there guys, it's Matt from Andertons here and today we're joined by Chris from Focus Right Innovation and he's going to show us a few new products today. So Chris, what do we have here? Okay Matt, well firstly thanks a lot for having us down to show you the brand new launch key uh, Novation yep. controller keyboard. Um, the launch key is available in three different sizes. Okay. So we've brought the, uh, the 49 note version here yep. um, and we have a 25 and a 61 as well. Okay. Okay, so obviously alongside the key bed that you would normally have with a controller keyboard, um, in this instance we've got 49 keys that we can play our virtual instruments with and, and yep. any sort of MIDI, MIDI instruments that we want to, we've also included a whole load of control surfaces right. as well. Um, but this has taken a slightly different step from the Impulse and SL range okay. of controllers that okay. we make. Um, and we've now employed a, a new feature called In Control, which makes it really, really easy for your door software to be mapped to the controls on the actual keyboard. Uh, okay. Mm. So is this a progression from Auto Map, or is it something that's completely new and exclusive to the launch key? At the moment, this is completely new and exclusive to the launch key. Right, okay. Um, and as I say, we, what it, the benefit of it is that it's a really easy and straightforward integration. Yeah. It's just a very simple case of setting up your preferences in your door, and then automatically the controls will look right. after everything else for you. So, I mean, if we have a look, I've, what I've got here is I've got a, a copy of Ableton out yep. on the screen. Um, and if I start to, you know, for example, move the faders around, we'll see that I'm starting to get a bit of control here. I'm looking oh, at right. channels 9 through to, uh, well, through to 16, I guess. And then if I use the track button here, which yep. is just under the LED, I can just move back. And now when I start to move the faders, I'm controlling the faders towards the beginning. Right. Okay. So we've got in, we've got access to all of the tracks available. We have eight faders on the yep. unit, but we can have obviously access all of the diverse tracks. Okay. Um, if I um, uh, what I'll do is I'll just move across using the track button to over to an instrument that I've set up, um, and we can see this is just a straightforward yep. Ableton instrument. And now because I'm in the uh, Ableton instrument, if I start to use the encoders, yep. again I've got control over the parameters of right. that instrument. So if I just bring out some sound here. We'll just reduce the attack. So we can use these encoders to be, you know, to get real nice hands-on okay. control over the software. I should say as well, we're using this with Ableton, but right. it's not exclusive to okay. Ableton. In control will work with all major doors. Right. Um, so if you're whether you're working on Cubase or uh, Logic or yep. Reason or Fruity Loops as well, you know you will be able to have the same sort of level of integration sure. and control over your instruments using the uh, using the launch key. Right. Range. Okay. Um, within Ableton, though, we do have quite an interesting functionality. You'll notice under the encoders we've got our um, launch pad mm -hmm. style yeah, yeah, drum sure. pads. Um, and these can have a number of different um, uh, uh, facilities. So for example, whilst we're in in-control mode, and we can tell we are because the in-control lights are lit yep. here, I can actually use the drum pads as clip launchers within uh, Ableton. Right. A little bit like we can on the impulse keyboard yep. as well. Um, and if I use my transport controls that I have over here, I can move my um, selection up and down. And for example here, I'll see that I've got three different buttons that are lit there, right. and I can actually then trigger these samples, and these will be referring to tracks 8 through to 11 there. So I can just sort of trigger these here, okay. and if I need to uh, trigger the, the, the clips further down, I can move back using the track control, you can see now I've got access to the other clips that haven't been started, so if I trigger those now, and the row underneath will actually stop the clips as well. So, so if I want to stop these clips, press the row underneath, it will stop. So, so with the with the colour change, is um, is that in conjunction with uh, the colours of the clips, or is that the colour changes to sort of start stop or? No, you're absolutely right, Matt. Basically, if we have an um, a, an orange LED yeah. there, then we know that we've got a clip in there, okay. uh, but it's not actually playing. Right. When I trigger it, it'll go green to okay. say there's a clip in there and it's playing. If I want to actually record as well, so if I um, just move across to, for example, this drum kit pattern here, I'll just turn these ones off for the moment, 
Um, now I'm uh, on a, an 808, or sorry, a 606 okay, kit yeah. here, um, and if I trigger the clip with this button, you'll notice that it'll go red because we're in record enable yeah. mode. Now that's actually recording, and then I can just press that again. I've now got a contained clip there for right. me to be able to play into. Now, if I take in control off, okay, I now have a drum, a set of drum pads that I can play to trigger the clips okay, in the yeah. usual way. So, okay, so, and that will have recorded <laughs> because yeah, we're already yeah. in record yeah. mode there. And again, I can come back out now and say, actually, you know, let's stop that clip because it's not yeah. what I wanted to play. <laughs> And the same goes for the other encoders as well. For example, um, as I demonstrated earlier, while we're in a, 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 an instrument within, uh, specifically within Ableton yeah. here, um, I can instantly take control of the parameters like so. If I take it out of in control mode, these then become MIDI CC controls. Oh, okay. And I can assign them yeah, to whatever I like. So we do have quite a deep level yeah. of integration. What I'll do is I'll just quickly show you as well, because I do have on here Cubase. Um, and just show you that we do have the integration there with Cubase as well. Just just while we're talking about the layout, mm. um, the two buttons we've got here, mm -hmm. uh, what what do they, ah, what do okay. they trigger? Good question, exactly. Yeah. Now, if we again, if we're working within um, Ableton, for example, we can launch whole scenes, i.e., a whole row right. of clips, yeah. using this button. And this button then will act as a stop button for all of the okay. clips as well. Okay. So effectively, this is a stop all button, and this is a scene launch. Um, yeah. And so is that those buttons essentially exclusive to Ableton, or can they be used? Um, at, at present, yeah. I mean, they, they are part of the drum pad side of yeah, Ableton. Right. There is another function which I will show you um, as we as we move on. But I'm going to just open up Cubase now, just to show you, you know, the sort of integration that we have as well. Okay. Okay. So we've now loaded up Cubase, yep. and you can see I've got um, one of the instruments up here, and I also have the mixer. Yep. If we look at the mixer first of all, as I start to control the faders on the actual keyboard, yep. we've got instant control over them. If I am in in control mode here, I'll have control over the pan for those tracks as well. So again, I've got quite a deep level of sure, control sure. over the mixer side of things. And what I've done is I've got um, a sound here in the virtual instrument, and if I and I've already mapped the CC controls, um, so I've taken it out of in control mode, and these have become CC controls. Yes. And I've mapped those to the eight parameters on the instrument. So if I just arm this track now, for example, here, and then start to play. same moment because I'm still in in control on the faders here the yeah. in control button is lit if I open up the faders we can see I'm still able to control the volumes and also the parameters on the actual sure. on the instrument itself yeah so alongside all the deep integration that yeah. we've got with all the various different doors and uh, you know computer based uh, programs okay. we also have a couple of hidden bonuses as well for nice. the launch key um, Novation have recently released two free apps on the iPad okay. um, uh, available from the iTunes store. Now, as I say, they're completely free, and we have the Launch Key app and the Launch Pad app. Right, okay. Mm. And what we can do is we can use the Launch Key to actually control those apps, um, again, with a very nice deep level of integration. Right. I'll show you. Yeah. So, yeah, so we've got the free apps on the iPad, yep. and what we need to do is we need to use the camera connection kit to connect yep. the USB connector. Um, and once that's done, that just goes into the side like so. Okay. You'll notice that we just had a little bit of, well, we've got the lights up on the launch key there, right. and effectively we can power, self power through the iPad itself. Oh, right. So there's no power supply being yep. used at all here. We can use this completely remotely. Yeah. So I'll open up the Launch Key app initially. So if we just open that up, okay, and this is the brand new Launch Key app. And as you can see now, we've got we've got control over that. Um, it will work with other apps as well, right. other than the Launch Key and the Launch Pad. But we have a really nice deep integration okay. with Launch uh, Key and Launch Pad. So um, at present, I have the In Control lights lit. Uh, we'll come back to that in a moment. But I'm just going to take these off. And what I'm able to do now is control the actual parameters on the actual synth. So we've now not only
not only got a keyboard that will send MIDI data, yeah. it will also receive these, this encoder data and let you take control as if it was a real synth. Um, over here, I've also got uh, my transport controls, which can double up as a latch and an arpeggiator. So if I turn the arpeggiator on and then turn the latch on using the loop button and then just hold a, key, uh, a chord down, so that will latch in place. I'll start to use the sounds here. Are the, um, the control parameters fully customizable? Or, uh, well, this is I version one of the launch right. key app. Present, you know, we haven't we've sort of selected the best sort of parameters for your right. controls. Sure. Um, but of course, you, these are fully controllable and give you a wide range of um, you know of, of sonic possibilities. If we use the uh, faders over here, we can actually start to um, well, we can start to manipulate the envelopes as well. So, for example, the first four head faders here are an attack in case a state yeah. release for the amplitude. Different preset. There we go. Okay, if I want to choose a different preset, I just simply tap it and now. Okay, right. If I want to choose a different sound, for example, we'll just go for blowpipe bass. And I want to then store this as a favorite yep. setting. If I hold down the circle button here, and tap the pad I want to store it to. It comes up and says it's now stored that as my favorite in this particular pad. So for example, here I'll go back to an original sample uh, sound. And then I'll go back to the one that I've just stored as a favorite. And it's there, yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Now, within the Launch Key app itself, we employ the use of nodes in this sort of area here. Yeah. And these act like an X, Y axis kind of parameter control. Right, okay. And I can easily grab my node um, using my finger and move those. And as I'm doing that, the parameters are changing. Um, so if I just move these across here, I'm getting a different set of parameters. Right. The bottom row in the launch key, uh, of, of drum pads in the launch key app yep. will actually fire the node around to the various different parameters. Okay. So. As, as it's moving on the screen, the nodes, uh, the presets, um, the grid that it's working on, is it kind of, uh, would it work, say, if you move it to the left, it's going to affect more of the uh, filter settings or things like that, or is it just kind of... Yeah, it, it depends on which, which of the nodes you move around. Right. I mean, effectively, as I grab hold of this, you'll see that it basically... Oh, we'll grab this one instead. I'll just grab the wrong node there. But basically, you can see how it's affecting the parameters. Mm -hmm. My hand was obviously in front of the screen there, but basically you can see how that yeah, affects right, the different okay. parameters. So we can select a preset from the preset list, right. but then we can use the bottom row of pads here on the nodes to actually, I suppose, effectively include more presets from that initial yeah. preset. Now, the other thing is, obviously, this is the Launch Key app, right. a completely free app, but we also have another one. And if I use the track buttons on, this, on, on the side here mm. and press to the right, we can automatically open up the right. brand new Launchpad app. And now we have two apps working at the same time. Right. So for example, if I play the keyboard, we're still getting our yep. launch key yep. sounds. But if I use my in control buttons here, I can yep. select whether I control the launch key app or the launchpad app. So if I turn on the buttons now, we see now we have two rows of 16. Yep. Uh, sorry, two rows of eight, I beg your pardon. And here we have all that, our rows of eight. So now I can actually start to trigger samples from, a, from my uh, launch pad app. And I can use the uh, fast forward and rewind arrows to move up and down. And then I can trigger. Okay. And now, if I press the red button here, this takes me into my effects mode. Effectively the same as if I, on the touch screen, Go into effects mode okay, here. Okay. This gives me access to a whole variety of different effects, such as stuttering effects and filter effects. Right. So, for example, so we can start. 
start to play around and, and start to mess, mess around That's the really sound. Good. So the bottom row here will give me more sort of filtering type effects. It's on an LFO. We get hands on and get a bit creative there. Exactly. Yeah. That's really cool. That's it. Now again, we have two other sets of controls, faders and encoders. And if I move to my filter mode here, yep. you'll see now that my in control button is on, I can actually control the filters for the individual tracks. Could you select multiple uh, clips to, to affect that, or is it essentially just you, you have to this is one This is one. per track, so oh. yeah, so effectively my filter is there available for various individuals. Yep. However, if I go to my filters that are available in the effects side, okay. this will affect all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Again, if I go to my volume side, I'll show you this now. I can then use the faders here to actually bring in clips and play along with the volumes. And again, of course, I've still got the keyboard. Yeah. Is, the launch key is still working underneath. And if I take my in control buttons off, I now have You're back to the, the launch key app now. Yeah, if I need to see what I'm doing, I can press the track button. Yeah. And I'm going back to the launch key. Right, app. okay. So you've pretty much got a full sort of uh, you know performance set up with exactly the two apps and the keyboard. Exactly right, yeah, we have a full you're absolutely right there Matt, it's effectively a, a performance station really. And the iPad app, um, the launch pad app, I should say, is um, yeah, it's really configurable. Um, at present, we, we've included a whole load of Loopmaster samples in there right, that you can yeah. play with. And it's easy to access those. If I just come out of the volume mode here, and I have an edit button up here. If I go to double tap on the edit button, I can now click on the pad that I want, and I can choose All from right. a whole list of different presets. When I've chosen my preset, I can then choose how I'm going to trigger that, and we have a selection of either loops or one shots. Right. Okay. Yep. So it's again very versatile way of being able to set up your own sort of uh, performance set, if yep. you like, in the Launchpad app, and then control it directly. That's really clever. I mean, is it something that you would add to over time, or because I mean, I can see there's quite a lot on there, but is it something that? Yeah. Room for expanding. Well, I guess like all sort of um, iPad apps, you know, we're always looking at developing. Sure. So you know, this is the, obviously the first version that yep. we've got. Um, and I know that the guys are working very hard to, uh, you know, to develop what we've already got and sure. take it to the next level. So, Chris, when are these going to be available then? Um, right. Well, we're going to be looking at shipping these in the next uh, next few weeks. Um, the apps, I should say, are already available and are completely right. free. Okay. So you can go onto the iTunes Store and get the, get hold of those straight away. Uh, the keyboards themselves. We're probably going to be around sort of end of March, towards the beginning of April. Okay. Um, well, thank you for coming in today, Chris, and telling us about the Innovation Launch Key. Um, for more information on this, uh, please check our website at www.andertons.co.uk. Uh, alternatively, give us a call. Uh, and thank you for watching.